Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode nine of the Screen to Screen Halloween special podcast. Uh, on today's tonight's episode, on this episode, um, we're going to be taking a look at the 2007 Rob Zombie directed Halloween reboot, a film I've never actually seen. So I'm excited to check it out for the first time. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm going to be your host uh, and we're going to get into some audio commentary for this movie. So thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. And uh, yeah, let's um, let's get right into it. So I'm going to go ahead and push uh, push play on my Blu-ray double feature here. Um, and play lay film all right so it's booting up and we get the dimension logo uh so this was a reboot for the franchise they you know rob zombie the, the musician um film director took over and um you know this became kind of a fresh start and uh let's see the darkest souls are not those which choose to exist within the hell of the abyss, but those which choose to break free from the abyss and move silently among us. So we get a quote from Dr. Samuel Loomis here at the start of the film. Halloween. Just black and white lettering. Interesting. All right, we could get kind of a sort of a shot here of like a suburban Haddonfield, Illinois, October 31st. Not sure what time period this is set in. I don't know if they went back to the 70s for this one. But we kind of see like a house and there's like some pumpkins and decorations and stuff. And there's like a kid playing with some rats inside and he's got a kind of a creepy clown mask on. He takes one of the rats out of the cage. He calls him a cutie pie. He's named the rats. There is pets. Elvis is the first one. We get sort of these weird little close-up shots of the rats. Then we get we get some eggs cooking in a pan. We have some pretty pretty awful parents arguing with each other. Well. Wow, this is uh, right, right off the bat pretty intense and pretty pretty awful. Um, some of the stuff they're saying to each other. Yeah, really really like kind of visceral, brutal evilness, vileness right off the bat. You know, this sort of like family in distress, family having, you know, not good parents. Um a, a different view, a different take on the on the Michael Myers situation than than we saw in the original film. Right, he didn't have like a broken home. He didn't have like a bad family. He just was evil. So this family clearly has a lot of problems. Ronnie. Oh wait, is this Ronnie like? Oh, God. Just domestic violence, abuse, left and right. That scene's terrifying, right? Oh, God. So the, the kid from earlier is in the bathroom, and he's got, like, a bloody scalpel, and he's just screaming, and the parents are just, like, oh, man, this is, this is really, this, this is brutal. Oh. oh my god the transphobia homophobia this scene literally has every possible terrible horrible it's like let's just throw in as much terribleness as we can into one scene Man, this is brutal. This is, this is brutal. I don't know. This is, I, I, there's a reason why maybe I never watched this. This is terrible. 
His father is so, so viscerally bad. Uh, it's so, it's so, uh, that, that's a really tough opening scene. It's really bad. Like it's really brutal. Just, just every type of abuse. I don't know. This, this is very not Halloween, you know, like it kind of taking it to this kind of place with this kind of brutality and this kind of violence and this kind of abuse and this kind of trauma. Oh God, it's really like, Oh, there's so much homophobia, misogyny, abuse. So it's, it's really messed up. So they're they're sort of mocking him because his mom is an exotic dancer. And they're just they're just saying a lot of like really bad stuff and really messed up stuff. So he's getting kind of beat up in the bathroom and bullied and and a principal walks in or some older person walks in and yells at the kids and tells them to Looks like he has some makeup on. And the kids the kid says Fuck you to the, to the adult. <laughs> See, I don't know. Like, so if this is Michael Myers and this is kind of like the, the whole, uh, you know, origin story of Michael Myers, like, I don't know. It's not that I'm not really into it. We don't, we don't need, we don't need any of this. Like none of this is, is none of this does anything for the story. Now we got Dr. Loomis. Who is this actor? This actor might be a redeeming quality of this film. Sort of a young, a younger Loomis, maybe long, longer hair. He has more hair. <laughs> um, So, you know, he's, he's like a, you know, he's like killing animals. He like murders things. Dr. Loomis thinks he might be, you know, it's like a serial killer. I don't know though. Like this changes the whole thing, right? This changes, it changes the whole story. He's a, he's not really a, a, a sadistic serial killer. He's just evil embodied in human form. So. They're just having a conversation about Dr. Loomis is sort of talking about early warning signs for, for deeper issues, deeper problems. And then the Halloween theme kicks on as we watch Michael Myers kiss t-shirt, ripped jeans, long blonde hair, sort of run away from the principal's office, sort of escaping from whatever they're talking about. He goes to his locker, grabs his Halloween mask. And those bullies are now... And they're threatening to kill the Myers kid again. These two bullies that got detention and they're... So much rage in this town. Everyone's, everyone's full of it. Everyone's full of rage and anger and angst and abuse and trauma. And it's really sad. But I think that's like the the undercurrent here too, right? Like what does trauma do? What does pain and suffering do to people and how do they deal with that? How do they, how do they pass that trauma along to others? That's kind of an interesting shot, right? So now we have the, the sort of these, these very echoing shots of the original film where like Michael Myers is sort of following a kid down the street in the, in the original film, he followed Laurie, right? So kind of, a, that's kind of a cool moment. Um, and this bully, I don't know what his name is, but he kind of makes his way down into the river, I guess, or the creek or something. And Michael's kind of following him and 
he jumps out from behind a tree with his mask on and has a shovel and just starts wailing on this bully and just kind of he just starts hitting or not it's not a shovel it's a tree it's a large stick and he's just sort of smashing him with it and the bully is just begging him to stop and he's not Hits him kind of right in the back, and he's, you know, clearly hurting him. Kind of get like a little head tilt right there, sort of a Michael Myers head tilt moment. Interesting camera work, too. His camera's kind of like behind things and kind of almost like it's someone looking on hidden behind things. The blood's the blood is interesting looking in this, too. It's a lot more real. It's a lot more like um, sanguine. It's kind of black almost. So the bully's is kind of begging for his life and Michael Myers takes the f- photo of his mother out of his pocket. And then he kind of slow-mo sort of with the sun in his, at his back kind of pulls the mask down. It's an interesting kind of moment there. And then he just sort of finishes this guy off. He just... We get some interesting shots of like the treetops from below sort of spinning. It's kind of an interesting moment. Like we often get a shot like that with like death, I think in film, like the soul leaving the body kind of moment there. Right. And I guess this is Meyer's first human, you know, murder. Um, and, uh, I don't know. It certainly changed the story, right? Certainly a different tale now, right? We have him as a, just a killing, killing the bully, not his own sister. Or maybe we might get to that, but, uh, and he did it because he was, you know, harassing his mother and he just, because he was getting beat up in the bathroom and he just, I guess, snapped and didn't want to get, you know, whatever from Dr. Loomis. Okay. So cool. We get like a film within the film moment here. I'm not quite sure what movie that is. We go back to the terrible father, drunk, smoking, just abusing his family all day long. And there's like a flickering jack-o'-lantern on top of the TV. And the, the father's just being terrible. And he's just using some really, really awful derogatory slurs that are just not acceptable to use at all. Um, even in 2007, they weren't really acceptable to use. And I just don't know if that, I wouldn't, I don't think that has a place in this film or anywhere, but you know, there's other ways to make people come across as a vile character without using those kinds of words. But so Judith Myers getting a lot of like how far 13 15 minutes into this we're getting a lot of like a lot of like adolescent michael myers or young michael myers and this the dad's just it's just yeah it's like it's 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 uh it's oppressive like it's it's just constant it's non-stop it's almost over the top it's almost hyperbole but i don't think it is i think it's actually pretty accurate So Judith doesn't want to take her brother trick or treating and her and her friend, boyfriend go upstairs and leave Michael by himself. I don't know. I just, I just think that this, the whole, this whole take. All right. Then we get this sort of pole dancing stripper scene. Um, this whole take is like, love hurts okay this whole take on this is weird because it's making you it's it's generating this sort of empathy in a way right for this character right abusive home life you know uh just not not a good childhood at all abusive father mother that is you no know, doing the best she can but is not really around much and 
you know, what are we supposed to feel here? What are we supposed to be like, oh yeah, poor Michael Myers? Like, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird take. Like, I, I don't just don't think, I don't think anyone wanted this. I don't think anyone wanted this like exploration of the psyche of Michael Myers, but we get this extended strip scene cut in between of Michael, like by himself, windy street, trick or treating. Meanwhile, his sister and her boyfriend are upstairs having sex and, you know, okay. So this, that guy's not her, that's not her real dad. That's not Judith's dad, Ron, it's Ronnie. And she says her dad's dead. Oh God, this guy brings the, he brings the mask. Oh, she's, so he's wearing the mask. <laughs> what, what mask is that exactly? It's like a Michael Myers mask. Um, and then the actual Michael Myers returns home from trick or treating alone and sad with his little pumpkin patch thing of candy. His dad, his stepdad or whoever this guy is, is passed out drunk on the chair and Dracula's on the TV. Just miserable life. Uh, and to make to just the cherry on top is that all he got was candy corns. That's the true, that's the true, uh, the true genesis of, of Michael Myers rage is the getting the candy corns. <laughs> so now he's just in the kitchen alone. It's well lit though. It's good lighting in that scene. Um, oh, and he got those gross, like peanutty. Th uh, those are gross too. Yeah. That's not a good haul at all. Um, nice details though. Like his fingernails are kind of crusty and dirty and Like he's not really being taken care of at all. And then he walks over to the drawer and finds some tape. Some duct tape. This movie definitely like takes his time. Then he grabs the knife, you know, the classic Halloween knife from the drawer. And now he's got this big knife and he's got some duct tape. And he kind of... He kind of stalks his way over to Ronnie, who's asleep on the chair. And he's kind of brandishing the knife. Sets it down on the sofa. And he uses the duct tape to just t tape the guy to the chair so he can't move. And his mouth is taped and everything's taped. And then he brings down the mask. Interesting kind of like moment of like the mask represents his murderous side or his, you know, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Like the, the, the thing that allows him to kill. That's a creepy shot too of him sort of in the, in the window kind of looking out. It's weird. It's like, it's hard to remake, you know, Halloween because it's such a classic, but, you know, you hear the music and you think, you know, this isn't right, but all right. So here he is. Ronnie's taped down. It's a good shot of up looking up at him. Uh, oh, and a very gory moment of he just slices his throat and they just show it all and he, the blood's just spurting and. Ugh, that's that's a lot of that's that's pretty bad. That's pretty gory, honestly. Like that's a lot of blood. And he just regards him coldly. And the sister and the brother and the, her boyfriend are upstairs, and they're finished now. And he leaves, and she puts on her headphones, listens to some music, and kind of makes his way down the hallway. And oh, we sort of see a flash of. Of Michael. And he's kind of stalking him. This is kind of cool. And he's got a baseball bat. I 
He doesn't notice Ronnie dead. Goes to the fridge for some beer, probably. Or some, I don't know, some lunch meat. Oh uh, yeah, he's going for to make a sandwich. And here comes Michael Myers out of the shadows. Yeah, it's kind of kind of weird. We get a lot of like a lot more stuff with him as like a kid. And he just kind of stands there for a sec. It's a good scene. It's a good. It's an interesting scene. I think this. Oh, the the bloody hands and the bat. There's some tension here. Oh. Interesting little camera work moment there. When he hits him, right when he hits him with the bat, the camera kind of jostles up and down violently too. It's kind of a neat, neat little moment of direction. And then he just wails away on him and just murders him. Oof. Man, they really, they really go all in on like the blood pumping out thing. Like... I guess, you know, they wanted to make it more violent, more visceral. And he, he just walks through the blood, doesn't even care. Just footsteps of blood everywhere now. Well, that guy's out of the picture. And the sister's listening to Don't Fear the Reaper on the headphones upstairs, of course. And then here comes the sort of, you know, the moment of truth, right? The The, the original kind of origin moment of Michael Myers murdering his sister which we never really got an answer about why he just just wanted him dead he just was evil and he wanted to murder his family that was the the idea in the original films you know we don't we don't need to know the why i don't think it makes it creepier not knowing it maybe this just feels like you know it's too much like explanation for it all oh now he puts on the he puts on the the other mask, the scarier mask, the Michael Myers mask. And she thinks it's Steve, her boyfriend, and he's kind of like caressing her leg for a second. And and then she realizes, she turns and realizes it's, it's Michael. She kind of slaps his face, tells him to answer her. She's kind of hitting him. And then he stabs her in the stomach. <laughs> Quite different from the from the scene in the original film. This is 2007, so, you know. Almost 35 years later. Uh, and then she kind of staggers out of the room. Just dripping bloody everywhere, dying. It's interesting too that we we sort of we still keep with that with that trope of like sex and death, right? It's like the death drive and the and the the sex drive. You know these sort of Freudian ideas that are present in so many horror films, right? It's like these two these two things that humans essentially that drive everything we do, death and sex, right? Like, or life, if you want to think of sex as sort of life. And then we get this cool, this, well, cool, this, we get this like interesting scene of like him sort of slashing her as she's trying to crawl away. And he's just sort of just like, the camera shakes really interestingly too in the hallway here. And we get this neat like shot of the close up of the mask on this child's body, which is kind of a weird juxtaposition, like seeing the adult, male face mask on the kid's body is I think an interesting move to make because like we sort of see the evil like as a mask like the evil is a mask um, and then he goes over to the little baby there's a little baby too in this family now everyone's dead except the mom who's at work and the dad and the baby and Michael Myers goes to his little baby brother and he takes the mask off And he says, happy Halloween, Bill. And he kisses him on the head. And then we cut to the strip club. And the mom's shift is over and she's leaving. With some guy. And 
and she arrives home to see Michael sitting, sitting on the steps. And we get the, we get the music, the classic music. She walk, walks up to him and he's holding a little baby. She asks for the baby. She wants to know what's, what's going on. And the police sirens start to come up in the background and we get a really cool aerial zoom out shot here. So that was a long scene. That was like 25 minutes. And then we kind of get a montage of the, the police arriving and, you know, the aftermath and the fallout. And the mom is just devastated and traumatized and everyone's dead and she, she can't deal with it. And that's pretty traumatic. Interesting, sort of like sepia-toned kind of, uh, it almost like looks like historical documentary footage here. Kind of cool. They're kind of just recapping all the murders and... Oh, interesting. There's like a freeze frame now. That's a cool, it's a cool shot. So there's a freeze frame of like all the police and the, the coroner bringing out the bodies and the sirens are still kind of blip turning, but like everybody's stopped. It's like a tableau almost like they're all just frozen in time and the camera kind of pans down to the back of a police car and Michael Myers is there in the car just kind of staring, staring into nothing. And he kind of turns and looks directly at the camera. That's kind of cool. Smith's Grove, 11 months later. 11 months later. So we sort of skip over some stuff. We skip over like the trial and we skip over like the legal proceedings and we end up at the sanitarium, Smith's Grove, the same one from the original film. And now Myers is with Dr. Loomis. Interesting. So we're getting like some of this stuff too, like the Loomis Myers interviews. He's drinking orange juice, which, to, you know, traditionally in film signifies death. Godfather, for example, when, when Don Corleone is killed, there's oranges. Spoiler alert for Godfather. Not killed, assaulted, attacked, his life attacked. Doesn't die there, but... Um. So Loomis is asking him if he remembers anything about killing his family. And the, he's just like, I don't know. I didn't do any of that. It's, so was it like dissociative disorder? And the mom comes to visit. Really interesting framing of that scene. Like the sanitarium looks, looks interesting. I think this might be the 70s because they're kind of dressed like, like 70s style. And he asks if everybody's okay at home and like he is like as, as though he really doesn't remember doing what he did. The mom is clearly like upset. All right, then we get some dark and stormy night, sort of a slow zoom. This is actually not bad so far. Is that Danny Trejo? So the janitor is giving him his pep talk. And he tells him to look, learn to look beyond the walls, to live inside your head, right? And this, that's cool because that's what we hear about from Loomis in the other original film about like, he stared past the wall, you know, stared at something beyond the wall, something, you know, 30 years down the road. Like, so he's sort of starting to get these seeds of an idea to like how to survive the sanitarium prison slash sanitarium.
Sorry, I was just listening. That's interesting. You know, Loomis explained that black isn't really a color. It's sort of the absence of color and white is all the colors combined and kind of, you know, hearkening to that whole black, white, like good, evil, being yang kind of thing. These scenes are kind of cool. The scenes of like the psych, you know, the sort of talking about like the the interview scenes. It reminds me a lot of like that show on H- that show on Netflix, Mind Hunters, where they're like interviewing the serial killers. And so Michael Myers is like he enjoys making masks in in his isolation, and and he likes to have his face hidden. He says it hides his ugliness. See, like, it's interesting, but, like, do we really need to do, do really need to dedicate half an hour of this film to, like, exploring the shattered psyche of young Michael Meyer? Like, I don't, I just, I don't know. It's a weird choice, in my opinion. And Loomis, this is a little, this is, this mask looks a little leather facey, but Loomis is just letting him kind of vent out his anger and frustration. And Michael just wants to go home. And he tells him you can't go home. You've done terrible things and he doesn't remember, I guess, or he's pretending not to or something. And Loomis is giving him a lot of, like, he's hugging him and he's, like, giving him a lot of care and stuff. And we sort of see that as the as the months go by and the seasons change, he continues to make these masks. And he stops eating and he just always wants, he just always wants the mask on. The toll of this is clearly having its effect on the mother. This is actually cool. Like the evolution here is kind of neat. Like the progression, right? Of like him sort of growing up in this space. That's kind of a neat thing to explore. He's just sort of silent and sitting and wearing the mask. And So he's just like unresponsive, completely unresponsive. And she brings a picture of her brother and, oh, there's some corn. There's some corn. There's some Garmon Bozia there. And Dr. Loomis says he'll walk her to the car and they leave Michael there with his, with his corn and his milk. And the nurse comes to sit with Michael while Dr. Loomis takes his mom to the car. It's kind of an interesting little scene here. It's kind of intense. You're kind of like, uh-oh, what's going to happen to this nurse? She kind of turns away from him and looks at the newspaper. And when she turns away, he grabs a fork. And we kind of... Oh, and he... He starts to murder this nurse. And the security guards rush in. This is kind of a shaky cam scene. Oh, God, it's brutal. And there he is standing there with his mask on. He's got his held head tilted like, you know, the classic head tilt. And he's just sort of murdered the, the nurse. And she's still kind of alive and she's kind of writhing on the floor. It's a good scene. Like all we hear is the sound of the alarm blaring. And she rips his mask off and he just screams at her so violently when the mask is off that she kind of falls to the floor. It's an interesting kind of, it's an interesting idea. Like, you know, like why the mask, why the need for the mask, you know, siren is just blaring. It's a good I like the direction. I mean, I think Rob Zombie is doing a good job directing this this film. And then a, another freeze frame here of him just sort of screaming.
and then some home home movie footage and his mom is just just devastated just at home crying on the sofa just you know her whole life has been torn apart here right like how could you possibly live with that kind of trauma after that sad I did not realize that this would be 40 minutes almost of this sort of early stuff but uh, then she picks up a, a weapon and I think she just she can't she can't take it anymore she can't live with the pain anymore and I think she's she's just sad she just wants to know what happened I mean and uh, we just oh man we hear a gunshot and a baby crying that's just terrible all right and then we cut we cut ahead to 15 years later 15 years later. And the two, the two custodial workers are kind of arguing a little bit. And the, the younger guy is kind of being rude to the older guy. And they go into Michael Myers' room and, oh, my God. It's just all masks now. It's just masks everywhere. He's just been 15 years of making masks. I don't know, he's like just massive. He's uh, he's so big. That's cool. I, I think that's a good choice, making him just like huge, like a like a pro wrestler, football player. And he's kind of hiding behind his hair, you know, no mask, but you know, he's kind of just silently kind of lumbering down the hallway. This is cool. Like I think that's a good. The physical presence is interesting and foreboding and scary. And Dr. Loomis is much older now and short white hair. What? He's his best friend? <laughs> he's my you're my best friend shows you how fucked up my life is very uh very um i'm getting there's a very like a uh, man man like wrestler mankind mitch full mick foley vibe with this long hair over the face mask look and dr loomis is letting him know that he has to move on That's cool. They sort of show the eyes just like blankness, nothingness. And Michael, Dr. Loomis is the author now of The Devil's Eyes, the story of Michael Myers. It's a giant picture of, of the young Michael Myers and his eyes kind of looking up, scare, scary. It, Oh, the projector behind Loomis. That's a cool shot, too. We sort of get a close-up of Loomis's eyes as he's talking about Michael Myers' devil eyes. So that's kind of a neat dichotomy shot there, too. That's kind of cool. So he describes Michael Myers' tragic life as a perfect storm. All right, and so we kind of get this key piece of uh, information that they are they are transferring the the Michael Myers tonight. So we have so some security guards with some maximum with some maximum sideburns here, and uh, they're talking about eating donuts and doing sit ups. Phone rings. Yes, sir. Okay. Interesting little details. Like the wire of the phone is cord is like frayed a little bit. It's weird. All right. 
So they kind of find out that they're that they're moving Michael Myers tonight, and the one guy jokes trick or treat. So you know, I think we kind of we'll see how this goes. But you know, there's some cool shots here. Like that's a cool shot, like sort of skew, a skew from below, sort of again, sort of uh, really playing up his sort of hulkiness in this. He's like monstrously big, right? Um, in this movie, so you know, he seems to dwarf everyone else. You know, he's out of frame when everyone else is in frame, and we see his fist, a clenched fist and, you know, he's kind of got this weird orange paper mask on and and they don't really, you know, they're just kind of like making comments about how fast he's walking and all sorts of other things and get some noises and some lights and stuff and they, they kind of bring him through the door. He's, he really does remind me of Mankind from, from the WWE on this a lot, but We kind of we kind of hear a little bit of his breathing. His his head's kind of looking around a little bit, and they're kind of building up the tension. You know, you kind of get a sense that something's about to happen, and then he breaks loose of the chains, and he just starts going to town on these security officers, just brutalizing them. They try to stop. Oh my god! He just like he just splatters his head on the window. Cyburn's guy got his head just splattered. And so he uses one as a human shield to block the shotgun blast and then just... God, what, what did he do? He just like ripped her throat out? Jesus. Yeah, really brutal. Um, you know, obviously they're going for like the brutality factor in this much more so. And then we kind of get the, hell, the head tilt, sort of like the classic kind of... And there's some interesting shots in this. You know, like the sort of sideways camera angle with him dragging the body down the hallway and all the blood on the wall. It's very, It's very like... It's much. It's a much more visceral horror film than than sort of Halloween. Uh, I think is sort of usually goes for. Um, so it's just an interesting kind of twist on the on the genre of Halloween itself. Like Halloween kind of established a genre, right? It is is it is its own genre, um, and this movie kind of you know upends that genre just a bit, and that's okay. Um, so here we have that security guard that kind of befriended him as a child, a kind of walking through alone. We see the you know. Whenever there's like a glowy pumpkin, that's that's not good. And it's not good in these movies. There's a glowy pumpkin on top of the... F- <laughs> I love how people just leave like like lit pumpkins just burning in places in these movies. Like, <laughs> that can't be safe. Um, so that the phone is just ringing incessantly and, and the, the, the custodian is like kind of... He doesn't know where everybody is, but there's like a half dead, half alive receptionist at behind the wall trying to scream and Michael Myers just sort of standing above her and... Secure the the jan the custodian guy didn't notice that, but we still hear the phone ringing in the background. And now he's just sort of making his way through the through the halls, and he's kind of like, "Where is everybody? What's going on here?" And then he turns and he sees he sees the massacre, and he's kind of shocked, and he checks to see if anyone's still alive, and and he starts saying some things, and oh, and then he runs across Michael Myers. He sort of asks him what he's doing and so he's like going to try to handcuff him and he's trying to get him back into his room. I don't think Miley's going to go for it. But Michael Myers puts his hands out to like, you know, let him handcuff him and and the, this custodian is clearly terrified. Ah! Uh, and he's, he's, he he turns on him in the last second, starts throwing him around, and and he's just like, Mikey, Mikey, why are you doing this to me? And he dumps his face in this water, and I guess he's sort of just going to drown him. He keeps saying I was good to you, Mikey. It is not. Uh, that's a great shot of like him underwater with the blood kind of mixing with the water. And that's that's a good shot. It's really kind of this is creepy. Um, and he's just kind of begging for his life and blood keeps coming out of his mouth. It's good.
the, the the sort of it keeps getting redder and redder and redder. It's it's yeah. This is taking a little while. This like I think he would have been done by now. All right. Well, he killed his friend. So clearly, I I, I like that though. I think that's you know. He's he's gonna smash him with the television. Oh my god! It really is like WWE. Um. Oh, and he just smashes him. I, I'm glad he killed that guy. I'm not, I'm not glad anybody gets murdered, of course, but like, I think it was wise not to have him be like, oh, that's my friend. I'm just going to spare him. Like, he just kills everybody. He's, you know, it's evil. He's evil. He doesn't, he doesn't care. All right, so now Sam Lewis is getting the call that, that some shit has gone down. He kind of wakes up in the middle of the night. And he just says, Michael's out. He's out. Michael's out. All right, so it's a bloodbath. It's a massacre. Everybody's freaking out. Michael Myers has escaped. Loomis is shit, he says. And now we get some... There's Tom Sawyer. Um, a lot of, like, heavy metal 80s rock music in this movie, which is kind of neat, kind of interesting. I don't know. We're at some sort of fuel depot or something. I'm not sure. Some sort of warehouse. There's, like, a fuel truck kind of pulling into park. Um... And a guy clambers out of the fuel truck, groaning and stretching and screaming. And he's he's just kind of excited to be back in town, I guess, and looks cold outside because his breath can be seen. This guy's got some epic sideburns, too. There's a lot of sideburn action in this movie. And we kind of see Michael Myers, like, wandering around outside this facility and and we kind of follow this this truck driver character into the bathroom and he's sort of checking his look in the mirror and we, we got to get this mask situation taken care of like asap i don't like the mask at all right now like and then we get some some images of him looking at sort of a pornographic magazine in the bathroom when michael myers sort of walks in Another bathroom, another bathroom scene. Look at his feet. They're just like, he's still got like his hospital sandals on and he knocks on the door, but his feet are just like covered in muck. He says, he's, the guy says he's got a taco <laughs> to get rid of and he's going to be a while. So keeps knocking. And now the guy's starting to get a little annoyed. So he he's so he's like threatening the guy, like, get out of here, like, you know, I don't you know. He's not listening. So he opens the door and they're kind of face to face. Joe Grizzly, bitch. <laughs> and Myers strikes Joe Grizzly and they struggle it in the stall. And Michael Myers is overpowering this guy. Like there is like this. I really do kind of dig this sort of brutality of him. He's just like too strong. He's like. It's, it, you know, in the other films, he's like got a uh, sort of a supernatural strength. But in this movie, it's more of just like he's just like this huge dude that like no one can deal with. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of interesting. So he defeats he murders Joe Grizzly and uh, stabs him with his own knife. And now there's just blood everywhere. And he takes Joe Grizzly's outfit, which is sort of like the more classic Michael Myers get up. Oh, that's just there's just blood everywhere. So now. Oh, uh, we get the we get the Mr. Sandman here. Interesting. Why do we always get the Mr. What's with the Mr. Sandman? So how, how, okay, so now we're at Haddonfield, Illinois, October thirty first. So here we go in Haddonfield. We always get the Mr. Sandman. So residential family making breakfast. We always get this sort of breakfast scene and.
and the, the hardware store is going out of business and And so I guess this is Laurie Strode. Wait, I, I can't remember what happened in the beginning when he killed everybody. Did he so did anyone survive? You know, just him in the in the I, I can't remember. I thought just him and the little baby. Maybe the baby was no, but he called the baby William, didn't he? Or Billy or something? All right, so Laurie Strode, we get does this is like classic. This is like the original film. Like it's the music, Laurie Strode walking down the sidewalk. This is really cool. There's Halloween decorations everywhere. It's a little more modern. Um, it's almost shot for shot the same, which is neat. Oh, cool. And we get this sort of to Tommy Doyle meets up with Laurie scene. This is cool. And so they're kind of, it's almost the same exact scene, shot for shot from the original film, which is really, really neat. Um, walking down the street, Tommy Doyle's going on and on and on and on about stuff. And so, you know, she's his babysitter. That's cool. That's a cool little, little moment. I like that. I, I'm into that. All right. And then cut back to Myers and he's doing something. Don't know. I guess he's in a house. He's walking down the stairs somewhere. Maybe this is his house. And he finally takes his mask off. The one he, this is our orange one that he made. And he starts ripping up the floorboards of this house that he's in and He's just sort of like ripping the wood up and splintering it and it's cracking. And under the boards, he finds this giant kitchen knife that he stabs into the ground. It kind of sticks there for a second. And then he reaches in again and pulls out his mask. And then the music kicks up. Cool. I like that. The, the Halloween music, the John Carpenter theme comes on and he sort of stares. I see, that's a cool shot too. Like he's staring at the mask for a moment. Like this is who I am. Like, this is who I want. I'm going to be like, this is, this is me. Like, right. And he puts the mask on. The mask looks cool. It's kind of like broken and splintered in places. And we see, we see a lot more of the eyes in this version of the mask. Like we really get a lot more shots of his eyes. And then he hears Laurie and, and Tommy like outside And Tommy says, don't go in there. That's the a, that's a spook house. That's the, you know, right? Remember that line? This is exactly the same as the original, but then we, we got that, we get a scene from the inside. We never got to see the inside in the original. And, and so there's, we hear, we hear Myers breathing. We get that first person shot of Laurie, like running up to the, to the porch to drop off the, the thing from her dad. And she's just like laughing and stuff. And Tommy's like, don't go in there. And she, and, and that's, that's a cool shot too. Like, she, she she puts the letter right in the mail slot and Myers is right there on the other side of the door. And she drops it and he just kind of watches her go. And then they continue on their way. That's cool. I like that. All right, now we get the scene of Laurie. Oh, well, in the library this time. So here, the, here is Laurie with her friends. And we get that shot of her looking out the window and there's Michael Myers sort of standing by a tree looking in the window. And he's just there. I like the little pumpkins on the house in the house behind him sitting there. And they're just sort of talking about what they're going to do that night when they're babysitting and how they're going to, you know, 
make plans to get with their boyfriends and stuff. And then she looks out the window and she's gone now. And then Loomis is kind of arguing here and then we switch scenes to Loomis leaving the sanitarium and hey that guy. Who is that guy? It's the guy from Ace Ventura, right? Tom Ace. Ah, oh, Mr. Ace. Welcome to that guy, you know. Or hear a school bell ring and now that now school's out, right? The dialogue. The, um, the, I don't know, the dialogue's all over. I like it. I like the sort of way they're talking, but like, it's a little, it feels a little over the top, but I still, I still think it's good. You know, it's just clear they're going for like, we're going to say whatever we want to say and stuff, you know, make it more modern, but... This is another good scene of them sort of walking down the street and, you know, it's just broad daylight and it, there's leaves everywhere falling on the ground. And, you know, it's very, very reminiscent of the original and Michael Myers is just across the street sort of just watching them. And they, they notice him and they say, who's that guy over there? Oh, my God. The dialogue in this. And they're sort of they're sort of taunting him like And then he walks away. All right, here and they're walking here comes the sheriff. Who plays Sheriff Brackett in this? This, I'm on my way home. Anybody want to ride? Who is this guy? Uh, uh, Sheriff Brackett. Uh. All right, so so his daughter, is it Annie, gets in the car and drives off. Totally, right? What, that her, her one friend keeps saying totally all the time. <laughs> All right, here's the here's the shot of of her walking down the street with the with the hedge moment, right? Maybe. And we get the graveyard scene. Satan's mother. Look at Loomis. Co the cooler version of Loomis, maybe, I guess, depending on your perspective. God damn son of a bitch. <laughs> God, I love it. The, the language is hilarious. Who would do this stuff? I think I know whose grave that is. Oh, but this time there's like a dead fox, like crucified on the grave. That's a little intense. But in the original is just dug up. Yikes. All right. Oh, wow. Interesting. So we just kind of fade to nighttime. We don't get any of that sort of slow burn to Halloween night. We're just now it's nighttime and the kids are showing up to the house. Uh, it's what's her It's uh, it's is it what's her name? Lindsay? No, it's not Lindsay. It's um, oh my gosh. Why can't I? Remember? It's, it's Laurie, Annie and 
I can never remember the other one's name. But anyway, they, they show up and they go into the house. I guess it looks like the Myers house. Is it the Myers house? It looks all dilapidated like the Myers house. Yeah, they go in and he's just staying. <laughs> he's just up on the damn balcony. They didn't see him up there. Like, he's just on the balcony. And they just start immediately having sex in a sleeping bag. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this movie, like, misses, misses the point. Like, it's the buildup. It's like the slow burn of the original. That's so good. Oh, his calf's cramping up. Is this Bob? So they they finish up there and just so, so now we get the we get the get me the beer scene. This actress looks familiar to me too, but. She, she, so it reminds me of someone else. Anyway, so Bob goes to get a beer, like in. So they kind of joke around about if the sex was good or not. She she gives it a zero out of ten. So he's making his way to the wherever he's going and. Michael Myers is just like in the shadows. I don't know. It, it, I, I was digging it up until this point, but they just skipped all the good stuff. <laughs> like they went right to like the sex scene and the murder, like all the good stuff they skipped, but whatever. Oh, uh, here. Don't fear the Reaper is on again. Oh, he runs out to the car to get the beers. Okay. I guess it's cold. So he, he goes, it's kind of chilly. He opens the cooler. Oh, she's got a cell phone. She's got like a Nokia. That's cool. This was 2007, right? So cell phones were, were, were you know, getting popular. So she's talking to Lori on the phone, on the cell phone. Linda, that's her name. So they have kind of a they have kind of a more intimate, serious conversation here about perceived, you know, identities and stuff and insecurities and things. All right, so we're getting the ghost sheet scene, which I don't really. Okay, so so Bob was in a ghost sheet, and then Myers attacked him. So that's kind of a cool moment. We don't we don't see that in the original, right? Like. Myers decides to put the ghost sheet on after he kills Bob, but it's the same sort of moment of murdering this guy. He kind of stabs him up against the wall. And he kind of hangs there, his feet dangle. See, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough to remake something that's so iconically classic. Like that scene in the, with the moonlight in the kitchen is just, it's just iconic and i don't know it's like when you're gonna when you do something that like that again it kind of i don't know oh we didn't even get the little side look Ugh. so meanwhile linda is back in the oh god that's that's really scary actually he's like too tall like how does she not realize he's like three feet taller and we get the same line from the original see anything you like and sort of she just sort of like Shows him her shows him her breasts and he kind of Michael Myers just kind of stands there for a moment and the dialogue is almost exactly the same from the original. He's got the goofy glasses on over the over the Oh, he actually has the beer this time. Michael Myers is sort of holding it. And then he unveils himself as she's opening the beer and grabs her around the throat. And she she's fully naked in this scene, like completely nude, which is interesting. Like, you know, the sort of again, that, that sort of we often see women naked in horror movies. Right. And and that's that's like a that's a trope. That's a thing in horror films. But I, I, I really think there is a vulnerability in, in nudity. I, I think they should. I mean, obviously, they should show any gender naked to sort of convey that vulnerability 
but you know, um, there's also a component of it of like who the audience is and, and, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a exoticness, there's a raciness to it. But I think that, that like him carrying her completely nude body is like, I, I think in this particular film that conveys this sense that like, he doesn't view people as human beings. He views them as just like, you know, animals or, or just things to be, you know, killed. You know, they're not, they're not anything more than that to him. So I think that's an interesting scene. So here's, here's Loomis now at the, at the local, uh, at the local gun shop of course, just buying a bunch of weapons. All right. Then we cut back to Halloween night and everyone's trick or treating and, Laurie and her mom are on the steps and they're kind of giving out candy and and they sort of are reminiscing about Laurie growing up and she's graduating and the mom can't believe it and and they kind of are talking about memories and the dad comes out and lights up a cigarette and And he says, watch out tonight. Be careful. A lot of nutcases on Halloween, you know, especially in Haddonfield, right? You want to watch out if you're trick-or-treating in Haddonfield, Illinois, for sure. All right, so Annie, sh- Annie shows up and picks up Laurie. And... So maybe we're going to get some of these scenes that I was lamenting earlier, but we're just going to get them sort of in a different order. So here they go driving around. They're going to gonna start smoking pot in the car. Dad, I hate vacations. I want to stay home. I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> oh my good God! Michael Myers just teleports in out of nowhere, decapitates the dad, busts into the house. The mom doesn't know what to think. She tries to fight him with like a firebrand, and he just kind of corners her and. She, she just sort of screams and that's it. That's a weird shot of like the phone and oh, the mom's still alive. She's sort of crawling away. Trying to get to the phone, I guess. That was that was a brutal kill on the dad, though. This guy's head just like sliced full off. Right when she picks up the receiver, Michael Myers grabs her. And he picks up a picture of Laurie and he's like, he like holds it in front of her and he's like, where is she? I guess. And he slams her through a glass, glass, uh, footrest table, end table thing, coffee table. And she, oh, he just snaps her neck. Ugh. Brutal, man. All right, so now we get Tommy and Laurie in the kitchen talking. Yeah, so we, we don't get any of those cool driving around town scenes with Laurie and Annie. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I would much rather have had that than the, like, Michael Myers as a kid earlier. But that's just, you know, whatever. So this is the, this is the boogeyman conversation. Uh, Laurie's, a little, Laurie's a little meaner in this one. She's, like, making fun of Tommy and... Oh God, the the pacing is wrong. The pacing in this movie is not right. It's not right. I'm sorry. It's not right. He just shows up. He's just always at the window. He just like teleports around. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. I, I'm not digging it. I'm not digging the pacing. It's just not, it just feels off to me. It feels like they're just trying to get to the moments. They're, it's like a, it's like a highlight reel of the original film. And, and they're just trying to get to the, each little thing. So, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Not not into it. All right, so we get the film within the film again, and we see we see Lindsay for the first time across the street with I guess with Annie, but this time Michael Myers is literally just standing right behind Lindsay, kind of watching her, 
I'm watching the TV and sort of like tilting his head to the side. That's creepy as shit. Just kind of standing there looking at her. The shape. And he hears, he hears Andy call and... And then uh, Annie comes in and Michael Myers isn't there now and... And they're arguing. Sh Sheriff Brackett. Is that the guy from Lord of the Rings that, that was Wormtongue? Grimer Wormtongue? It might be. And as usual, the sheriff doesn't believe Dr. Loomis. Dr. Loomis is trying to... This is a weird shot, too, with these, like, lens flares. Kind of interesting. Haddonfield Charbroiled Burgers. It is that guy. It is that guy. It's that guy that played Wormtongue in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Tomorrow's too late. Evil is here. The evil is amongst us, Sheriff Brackett. You must listen to me. It's here. He's got these purple lights fl like flickering. All right, then we cut back to Annie and Lindsay, and they're walking out. They escaped somehow, or they just, you know. She's got, like, a perfectly carved pumpkin. Like, it's literally, like, the most perfect pumpkin I've ever seen. And Michael Myers is just out. That's a good shot of him. Like, he's so tall again. He's, like, out of frame. Um, he's just standing behind him on the sidewalk. They don't even notice. Her pumpkin is really, like, uh, God, I wish I could... How do you make... You, you can't get a pumpkin. Like, that's so not real looking to me. Like, you go to the grocery store, you get a pumpkin, and it looks like it's... They don't look like that. Maybe in Illinois, they look like that. Um... Another film within the film. They're all watching spooky black and white old movies on the TV. I like that the, the set is very similar, though. I will say that's cool. That's a nice touch. Tommy hates girls. Oh, they're talking about Ben Tramer. Oh. Wow. Wow. This movie is messed up in a lot of ways. Like, they just use language in this that I find to be not appropriate at all. And, uh, it really should, you know, it's one thing to be like violent and sort of depictions of violence, but depictions of like hate speech and slurs and derogatory terms. That's not, I don't know. That's not like, it, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm not into that. I don't think that should be in the movie, but that's just my opinion. But so that definitely takes it down a couple of notches for me, like for sure. The decision to have that be part of the film. Um, But then again, I mean, you know, it's it's reality that people talk like that, you know, like people do say those tar terrible things and, but I don't know, I, I don't want to prop, you know, you shouldn't propagate that stuff. All right. So the sheriff, the sheriff doesn't like Dr. Loomis. He read his book. And the sheriff thinks that Dr. Loomis's book is just like, you know, nonsense to sell books. And so he goes into the whole speech about, you know, Michael Myers, Michael Myers is evil and evil is, you know, a thing and. His baby sister. So they start talking about his baby sister. I don't know, but it's not good. <laughs> okay. So 
So All right, so the sheriff calls the Strode house and no one answers and as we hear the answering machine we just see like the scene of violence and it's 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 brutally violent. They're just massacred and So he's going to break a promise, he says, which I guess I guess is the sort of confidentiality of the fact that Laurie is adopted. Now we get a skeleton in a movie like coming out of the. So. Tommy is still asking about the boogeyman and. And Lindsay agrees with Tommy like there's a boogeyman. I agree with Tommy. And the kids start like they start goofing around. Maybe she's scared of the boogeyman. Uh, she says, "Leave me alone for five seconds," and they they literally count to five and then start hassling her again. So then we cut back to Annie and and Paul, and they're about to have sex as well. Everybody's having sex on Halloween. Michael Myers is just kind of chilling in the background. He teleports around a lot in this movie. I don't know. A second ago, wasn't he like, wasn't he like in the other house and he was down the street? And they're, they're like, (laughs) they're getting into it. And Myers is just sort of watching them. I don't think, yeah, we don't, Annie doesn't ever get to be with Paul in the original, right? She, she gets killed on her way to go meet him, right? So, hey, in this one, she got to, at least she got to make out a little bit before whatever's about to happen. Oh, oh boy. And then Michael Myers just pulls Paul up and just stabs him and throws him across the room like he's nothing. And Annie runs off shirtless out into the street. And she almost gets away, but Michael Myers grabs her and pulls her back into the house. And she's fighting a little bit. She's kicking him and she's screaming and she's running. At least she she grabs a knife. She grabs a weapon at least. Oh, and he kind of just punches her and knocks her out and like just one punch knocks her out. And now she's just sort of crawling along the floor. Just like the other, just like the earlier person. And he's just kind of dragging her, screaming. It's pretty intense. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know about the decisions here. Like, to depict the struggle like that, I just... I don't know. I don't know if that works for me. Like, I I, I liked in the original when it just was kind of like... I don't know. Just kind of ended. He just kind of did it, and that was it. And it was kind of just quiet. There was a lot more quiet. There wasn't, wasn't as much like struggle. I don't know. It's weird. All right. So the sheriff is kind of giving this backstory about like the kid and the. His eyebrows are just always up. He's like always like wide eyed. So he's telling Loomis about the adoption of Laurie Strode and. So Laurie and Lindsay walk out of the house into the night. Yeah. The, the, just the, the pacing is not right. Like, okay, so here we are. Right. So another shot from the original, right? It's like, it's like we were trying to just get to this moment and that's a cool shot. I mean, it looks cool. It looks like the original, but like, I don't know. It's weird. The pacing on this is just really weird. And there's like a weird, okay. So they go into the house where everybody's got killed and they immediately see all these dead by Annie's still alive. Barely. 
And Laurie says, Lindsay, run. Get out of here. Lindsay goes stream, screaming off into the street. And Laurie's trying to help Annie. And, and, and Paul is like strung up. At, and he's got a pumpkin on his head. And Michael Myers is just like behind the door. That's kind of cool. Just behind the damn door. I guess he was right in the middle of like finishing that off and then Laurie showed up. So she tries to call 911 and he's, we see him behind her and it's brutal. It's very, it's very visceral. This film, it's very like physical, like in a, in a, in a different kind of way. And he kind of just like almost plays with the body that's hanging there for a minute. He kind of just like pushes it around a little and kind of regards it. And he just kind of leaves Annie laying there. All right, so the sheriff hears the 911 call. Again, like... I don't know. I, I just feel like they left out a lot of the good stuff. Like the, the, when the sheriff and Loomis go to the house. Oh God. It's, it's about 10 minutes. He's God sakes. He's found her. And then he's just screaming for help. And she's trying to warn her. And then Michael Myers grabs Lori and throws her. All right, now we get like the da nat da nat music and Laurie's running away and Myers is moving fast. He's moving fast, folks. She uses a chair to break through the window and he kind of he kind of gets there and she's running and that's cool. It's kind of like a recreation of that original scene where she kind of tears around the corner of the house and he's chasing her. I like the wind blowing. That's that's scary. I I think that's a good touch. It's like very windy. And she's just running down the street screaming. She's kind of hobbling because she heard her leg going out the door, I guess. Um, and she makes it to her. She makes it to the house where Tommy is, and, you know, in that same scene. And I like these long shots. They're, they're good, you know. But they're from the original, which is, you know, an homage, but also like, you know. So she's trying to get in the house and Tommy says, let me in. That's that's cool. They kind of see his face like in the in the window of the door and the kids start screaming and they run and he just he just busts in like Jesus. He just doesn't give a shit about doors. Everybody's running and screaming and just a lot of screaming in this. Oh, they're going to hide in the bathtub? What the shit? Like All right, the sheriff, the sheriff shows up. They come into the house. Is Annie? Did Annie survive? I got this. You check upstairs, Phil. Isn't wait? Isn't this the house where like, or is this Laurie's house, or is this the house where Tommy is? I can't. I don't know which house they're in. It must be. It must not be the one where Annie is because there was no body like hanging. So the police is outside the door saying, you know, are you okay? Unlock the door. Let me help you. And the other, the other officer is. This is a, this is a tense little scene. Where could he be? So the officer is asking her to unlock the door and. The kids are like, what are you doing? Don't unlock the damn door. <laughs> never listen. They never listen to the kids, but the kids know best. Oh, oh, that's a good, that's a good shot. They just, it's like a, it's like an, it's like a, I don't know how you describe it. The window is kind of like opaque and the cop gets killed up against the window and we see the blood pour out and Myers just busts in again. 
The other cop shows up and he just starts shooting Michael Myers. He shoots him once in the shoulder, but Myers kind of closes the gap before the cop can finish him off. It's very like he's very like ominous. He's very like for like he's his, his presence, his physical presence in this film is really interesting. So now he's in the bathroom and they're all just sort of screaming and he's grabbing Laurie like she's a rag doll, like just just literally just like takes her. And everybody's just everybody's screaming. He he pulls her through the door frame and And then we cut away to an external shot of, of the house and he's He's carrying her body. It's a cool shot. I'm glad they kept like the wind and the dark and the moonlight. I think those are the those are the elements of the film that make it Halloween. And so we see him just sort of carrying Laurie's body. She's still breathing. You can see her breath. She's, I guess I don't know. Maybe she's passed out. Uh, I'm not really sure. But he's just kind of carrying her down the street um, as as some more cop cars show up, or at another cop car. And it's Loomis and Sheriff Brackett. And they make their way to the house. I believe this is the house where Annie is. And Sheriff, he sees his daughter and... So he sees and she's still alive. She made it, presumably. And the kids are running and screaming down the street. And so this is an interesting change. Like he he like took he took Laurie. Loomis directs the kids to go stand by the ambulance, and he's going to go in search of Myers and Laurie. He's just running down the street. Okay, it's kind of a remix, you know, like there's elements here like, you know, Loomis is like tearing off into the night alone, like just wandering around the town, which he does a lot in the first one. And But th this is all new. I mean, this is a new kind of ending, right? Like Laurie being taken to some sort of lair. Where are they now? There's a pumpkin and there's some, uh, he sees Linda. And she, so Laurie kind of like comes to, she sees Linda's body, like kind of, they're in some sort of weird tomb. The, the, the Judith Myers tombstone is there and she sees Linda and she's not alive. And, and Laurie doesn't really know how to respond to that. And then Michael Myers is there and he's just kind of like makes his way into the room. This is interesting. Okay, so I guess it's like the basement of the house. There's a jack-o'-lantern lit in there somehow. I guess Michael Myers lit that jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> and Laurie says, who are you? What do you want? And he just slowly starts making his way over. And she's just pleading for her life. Don't hurt me. He drops the knife. What is this? Ah, oh, Jesus. What is this? Oh, God. And he shows her the picture. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know about this, folks. What? What is this? He's not supposed to be like this. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. He hands her the picture, and what's he? He guys. He takes off the mask now. Uh huh. And he just sort of sits down. And 
and Laurie just kind of looks at him and she keeps looking down at the knife. She doesn't understand what's going on here. I don't understand what's going on. This is silly, in my opinion. Like, you've undermined the entire premise of the film at this point. Like, you've rewritten the rules and made it into some sort of weird, like, I don't know. So she grabs the knife and she stabs him right in the shoulder. And then she tries to she tries to escape and he's lying there on the ground and But she's locked in, right? She can't get out. She's he's locked the doors and stuff and She's kicking, she's screaming, she's trying to break through the door, break it down. She finally breaks a hole big enough to maybe slip through and she tries to get out of there. She gets out of there. And, and it's, just, it's just stupid. There's another door she can't get out of. What, like, what? It's dumb. Um, and then he wakes up and he, he pulls out the knife and he puts the mask back on and now he's what? Now he's pissed, I guess? <laughs> just, I don't know. I don't I don't I don't think I understand this movie. I, I get I get trying to like I guess <laughs> how many times is he gonna Kool-Aid man in this movie? Oh yeah he just busts through the wall. Um grabs her he just breaks through walls. He doesn't give a shit. Uh so she's trying to get up the steps and get out of there and he's just breaking through walls and bust and then another lock thing she- <laughs> shit how many locked things are in this um and he's just like ripping apart the fences and stuff and okay so laurie gets out into the night and she's she's running and he's he's following her up the steps and she falls into an empty swimming pool oh my god Uh, that's not good you gotta cover yourself and leave so he can't see you in there So she has she just lays there screaming and she's at the like the bottom of this pool and he's at the top and he you know that's kind of it's kind of cool I guess it's kind of a neat little scene. She's terrified screaming. He's just sort of looking at her. And so she tries to climb out of the pool. But she can't because it's like an empty swimming pool. And he starts making his way down into the pool. And she's just screaming as he's making his way towards her with the knife. And then Dr. Loomis shows up. Michael, stop. Michael, it's me. It's Samuel Loomis, Michael. You're Dr. Michael. And he just ignores him. He says, Michael, please stop, Michael. And Loomis shoots him with a gun. And he yells, stop, stop. He shoots him again. He just keeps shooting him. Not working. All right, he shoots him three times in the back and Michael falls down. And Loomis now makes his way down into the pool to see how Laurie's doing. You're safe now. Clearly they have not seen the original Halloween. All right, so Loomis kind of gets her out of the pool. He puts his gun away in his pocket and they leave Michael down there in the leaves. And he's just sort of laying like face down in the, in the muck camera slowly kind of floating upwards so an aerial view of him laying there and Loomis puts Laurie into the police car and she's just from traumatized terrified and Loomis just sort of puts his head down for a second and 
And then he, wait, he's driving the, wait, he's driving the police car now? Last we saw him, he was just running. What? How's he, what? Was that the boogeyman? Uh, they changed the line a little bit. As a matter of fact, I do believe... And then he busts in the window and grabs Laurie from the window and Loomis starts screaming, why the hell does he have a cop car? Um, makes no sense, I guess. All right, so he grabs Laurie and takes her again and Loomis is like, stop, Michael, stop. Uh. So he's got Laurie like in a choke grip and Loomis is trying to talk to him. And he grabs Loomis and just is like squeezing his head. But it gave Laurie a chance to run upstairs and escape. So that was cool. Like, they, you know, they kind of remixed the end here a little bit too. They had like an extra moment, like an extra scene. But inevitably, she's now in, in an upstairs of a house. And, uh, oh man, Loomis is getting his face smashed in right now. His eyeballs smushed. So she's she so Laurie's upstairs. She's trying to hide. She like breaks a little hole in the wall and kind of climbs into the wall. Interesting. So she's like hiding in the wall. I think it's a I think it's an interesting choice too to like take Loomis out of the picture because in the in the last one right like Laurie sort of is saved by Loomis, but. And that may still happen here. I don't know for sure. I mean, I think he may be dead. It looks like he's pretty dead, but uh, he might come back. But but we'll see what happens. But um, interesting kind of reversal, you know, to take Loomis out. Why does he drag everybody around all the time? We never. It's like we never see him like like dispose of the bodies in the original. He just kind of they just kind of like are in places later. Um, so I guess we just we just get a little more like behind the scenes of like how Michael Myers gets rid of the bodies. So he's just dragging Loomis. And Laurie's kind of like hiding. Oh, we get like a little, we get like a little Texas Chainsaw Massacre moment there, which is cool. Uh, so he finds her like coat that got sort of, that fell off of her as she made her way through the door. And she's sort of hiding in the wall and kind of just looking in through this crack in the wall and just sort of absolutely terrified and trying to just be quiet. And it's it's, it's a tense little moment, like, you just gotta you just can't make any noise. And she's sort of just peeking up through the cracks. It's good. It's 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 echoes of the original scene in the closet, right? But just a little more, a little different, which is kinda neat. I don't know how she doesn't see her through the little crack. She's like literally right there. But he does have that mask on, so. So he kind of, she, she, you know, he kind of moves on to the next room and he's just looking around for her. She kind of relaxes for a moment. That's probably a mistake. And then he kind of looks back for a second and he's like, oh, something makes him turn back. Uh, we don't, we'll never know what intuition, I suppose. And he kind of is now, he's right in front of the wall, just like looking down. Bust through it. Come on, Kool-Aid man the shit out of this wall. He just, <laughs> he just starts punching it and smashing it. But we see that Laurie has escaped the wall and she's out of the room now in the hallway, kind of trying to hide. And he kind of peeks in there to see if she's there, but he's just kind of, she's kind of around the corner. It's, it's a good scene, a little fake out. He's, he's pissed. And she's, wait, oh yeah, he dragged, he dragged Loomis. So she sees Loomis and she sees his gun. And she sort of, she sort of squats down as he's bashing the wall. And, uh, and then he goes on. And she crawls over to get the gun. Yeah, this this last this end kind of 
goes on and on a little bit. All right, and then he comes around the corner, and she's there, and he's there, and they face off. And she runs, and he starts walking after her. And she's climbing up something now, and he's chasing her around, and that's a neat little shot of him looking up. He's like, huh, where did she go? Did she climb into that? Okay, she's up in the attic now, apparently. She's up in some sort of little crawl space somewhere. Is he just going to bust through his hand right through the floor here? He's got, what the hell? He's got a piece of wood. And he's just, he's just destroying the walls. He's just smashing the ceiling. This piece of wood. Hulk smash! Myers smash! Myers smash! <laughs> I like, I mean, I like some of the directorial choices here. Like, I like the way the camera sort of shakes viscerally when he does something violent. Um, that's an interesting little choice to make. I think it's kind of cool. It's very, it's a little video gamey, but, you know, I like it. Um, oh, and he's just, he's just stabbing the hell out of this ceiling. He's going to bring the whole thing down, folks. This is a lot of uh, destruction of the ceiling going on here. So he finally takes a little breather. She's somehow still up there, somehow not uh, hit by the board. And then she falls through the ceiling. Oh my, ouch. Into the, I guess, the adjacent room. She still got the gun in her hand. How many bullets are left in there? One, two, maybe. Oh, she's not doing too good. That was a brutal fall. She's very, she's very bloody now. She can't really stand. She's dizzy. She's just like her eye is bloodied and her mouth is bloodied. And there's Michael Myers right in front of her. What? What the shit is that? He just charges her and they go flying over the balcony? Is that the end? No, that's not the end. Interesting. Interesting choice. They both went over the balcony in this remake. So we fade out, fade in. Now we're on the, on the front lawn. Laurie is alive, barely on top of Michael's body. Presumably his body kind of broke the fall. She can barely move. She reaches for the gun. She's just completely... I do appreciate in films when, like, the protagonist kind of gets more and more and more, like, beat up throughout the movie. Like, Die Hard does a good job of that, too. So this is... I like the way that the progression of her, like, physical ailments have proceeded here. She's really, like, at, at the very end of her, what she's able to do. So she's on, she's on top of him with a gun, and she fires it right in his face, but there's there's no bullets. Or, or the chamber was empty. That one chamber was empty. And she kind of tries again. I like the, I like the camera shake when, when she clicks the empty chamber. Oh, and then right before she's able to try again, he reaches with the hand. Oh, and he, she unloads on his face. She just blows his face off. Oh my god, then we just see her screaming, just her face covered in blood, screaming. And then we get the shot of her like as a little baby being held by him as a baby. And then the Halloween theme and the end credits roll. And we get some shots of like trees and like old timey like movie footage. Interesting. Interesting ending. Oh. Oh, that's not good. I guess I realize now why this movie kind of got I ugh, that sucks. Harvey Weinstein. I don't even want to mention the name was a producer on this movie. Fuck that guy. Whatever. Um 
it makes perfect sense, but whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, of all the ones we've watched so far, this is easily my least favorite, I will say. That's Malcolm McDowell. That's that guy's name. Um, I did not like this at all. Uh, it felt like a weird retelling of the story. It felt like parts of the story that we didn't need to hear about. It felt like too much humanizing of Michael Myers. Half of the shit didn't even make sense in this movie. And then all the good stuff from the original, they kind of mostly cut out and kind of rushed to just get to the kills and to get to the violence and to get to the, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, not a fan. So I already say William Forsyth, I guess that's the guy from Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah, I didn't like this one at all. Um, I guess it had a few good moments, but yeah, overall, this is probably my, my least, my least favorite. Um, and we get the Mr. Sandman theme in the end credits. So, all right, well, you know, that one had a lot of stuff. <laughs> we got through it. There's, there's a sequel we got to watch. Um, not, uh, we'll see. Um, but, uh, yeah, what did you think of that one? You know, there was definitely a lot of weirdness in that one. Definitely a lot of, like, stuff changed. A few good moments, but overall, mm, not my favorite. Um, but I appreciate you hanging in there with me. Uh, I think that the franchise does redeem itself when we get to the new trilogy. So we'll get to that soon. And, uh, yeah, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for watching this with me. And thank you for supporting the Screen to Screen podcast Halloween special. We're almost done. We have Halloween 2 by Rob Zombie. And then we have Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. So we will get to those before the actual Halloween day. And uh, it's been really fun. So thank you for hanging out. And until next time, everybody, happy Halloween.